Hello everyone, this is Deepak Krishna VM, ME Structural Engineering AMI, a verified educator from N Academy. Welcome back to N Academy once again. So today we are going to see how pulverized fly ash acts as an aggregate for the lightweight concrete. All right. So before that, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the N Academy and also follow us through the other platforms like Facebook app and the website of N Academy. So let's begin. Hello everyone, good to see you. Hope you're having a good time. So we are we have been discussing about the artificial aggregates from the previous lesson. Okay, so previously we have seen some of the most important artificial uh, artificial aggregates like uh, bloated clay, uh, brick rubble, and also cinder. So similarly, today also we are going to discuss about uh, another very very important aggregate that is used as a lightweight aggregate in the lightweight concrete. Okay, so let's begin today's lesson without wasting further time. But before that, let's have a small recap of the things that we have learned in the previous lesson, or let's have a small recap of the intro, of or, or of the basics. Okay, so first and foremost. We know that aggregates play a very vital role in a concrete matrix. It provides the structural stability, it provides the dimensional stability, and also a very important feature known as the strength. Okay, so they also make the most of the uh, most volume in a uh, they comprise of the most volume in a concrete matrix. Okay, so that's that's how important an aggregate is to the concreters. So similarly, the aggregates here also plays a very vital role. So they has to be chosen in a uh, very dip, uh, very sensible manner. Okay, so the aggregates which weigh less than thousand kg per meter cube are considered as the lightweight aggregate, and hence these aggregates are chosen as lightweight chosen for the lightweight concrete. All right. So you might think that why this is so lightweight? If you look in the micro microstructural level, we can see that these aggregates are very much porous in nature. Okay, but still they have enough strength that they can be considered as an aggregate. Okay, so which means that they are not weigh, they are not very heavy, but they are strong. Which means that the concrete can reduce its uh, dead load. Okay, which is one of the most boon for a design engineer, and also uh, which gives him a very good playground to you know to in, uh, innovate, to give a more room for the experimentation and also for for the cost cutting. So in such cases, lightweight concrete plays a vital role. So lightweight concrete aggregates can be divided broadly into natural and artificial. Okay, about the natural aggregate we have discussed in the previous two lessons. So the artificial aggregate we are going to discuss today is the pulverized fly ash. Okay, so why the artificial aggregate was introduced? Because due to the lack of availability and environmental conditions, these aggregates were introduced. That means that in some in some places, okay, the natural aggregates were uh, deposited or they were formed only in a particular places. That too, that too in lump sum amount. But uh, in such in some places like deserts or some places like too much uh, winter area, uh, too much snowy area, these aggregates are very difficult to get. Okay, so that was the uh, non-uniformity or that that was the lack of uniformity in the distribution of uh, uh, natural aggregates. So. So, because of this, the price also become much high than the concrete and the aggregates become so expensive. So, in such cases, to tackle that, artificial aggregates were introduced. And also, in some cases, like if you want to, uh, we get we need to get a faster results, and also um, uh, to get particular results of particular property, and uh, as a method of waste disposal the artificial aggregate become more popular than the natural aggregate. So let's see about the artificial aggregate we are going to see today, which is some of the, these are some of the artificial aggregates that has been used in here. That means that brick rubble, foam slag, bloated clay, pulverized fly ash, exfoliated vermiculite, expanded perlite, and cinder. Okay, so today we are going to see about the pulverized fly ash. So fly ash is one of the most important aggregate and one of the most famous and one of the most recognized aggregates in the entire uh, artificial aggregate segment okay so this um, almost all the students who are making a concrete project will have some kind of fly ash in it and today is almost all the concrete mixes uh, almost uh, pardon me almost all the cement mixes has some kind of aggregate uh, fly ash present in it for the economic purpose and also for the other uh, behavioral properties okay so let's see what fly, uh, what actually fly ash is Okay, so first, before that, let's see what the word pulverization or the pulverized. Pulverized means the ground or grinded. Okay, in a, in a very simple language, it's a grinded type of fly ash. 
okay but it has come to with some other treatment also okay so first and foremost let's see what what these are so fly ash is a finely divided residue okay uh, which is a result from the combustion of powdered coal and powdered coal all right that this is a residue or this is a waste material or a, or a byproduct that comes from a thermal power plants from the burning or the combustion of coal as a fuel okay so when this uh, so this con con consists of very small fine particles okay so when these particles undergo the heating treatment okay they combine to form a glossy uh, they combine to form a uh, form a porous pellets or nodules which have the considerable strength okay so this is the generally what pulverized fly ash is all about okay and also and for the, let's see the fly ash once again so the the it's a finely divided residue resulting from the com combustion of powdered coal from the thermal power plants so these particles okay these particles are glossy in nature which means that they are not rubble and we, they are very fine and also they are glossy so these properties have give a what can you say the idea about design engineers that why can't we choose why can't we uh, replace this with cement or some kind of aggregates so they ch started experimenting and finally we got the fly ash okay so so we have the glossy particle fly ash here so when these particles are heat treatment okay there as i said before when they are treatment with heat uh, these small particles will combine and form a porous pellet or nodules which has a a considerable amount of strength so that's why it, it impart that's how it imparts the strength to the concrete all right so the pulverized fly ash was actually started as a waste disposal method okay so as we all know in the in previously in previous century in previous years the most of the energy was produced by the thermal power plants because thermal energy was used as a premier energy even uh, bef uh, before the usage of the fossil fuels okay so thermal power plants were a lot of there and coal was their uh, primary fuel okay so when coal was uh, burnt uh, there was there were a lot amount of waste okay well, this kind of waste like waste that forms a residue which are very fine in which are very fine in uh, which which is very fine like a talc so that's was the fly ash in those times okay so they the people used this method that means combining fly ash with the concrete as a disposal method but once the methodology the experimentation become more scientific when they experimented they understood that this is a very good replacement material okay so what they were found they found that this pulverized fly ash first of all it's a, it has it, it, it consists of glossy particles the particles are very fine in size okay so the particles were very fine in size this itself gives a very good advantage the advantage which means that it will fill the voids inside the concrete okay and also give us a very good smooth finish to the concrete once it's over and also because of this uh, fillability uh, criteria or fillability ability of the pulverized fly ash it pr provided with high structural density okay the concrete become very dense but not weight because it become more denser which means that the packing become more more prominent and become it the more concrete become as a single unit okay and also very much a very good advantage of using the pulverized fly ash was that it has a very low drying shrinkage okay so drying shrinkage was very much low which result in the boon for the design engineers as well as the people who are working with the concrete okay and also who take care of the concrete especially not working taking care of the concrete which means that shrinkage will happen only after some time so that was some of the advantages they had so some of the criteria the fly ash should have that which must undergo pulverization and sintering process that means the heating process uh, was that they should have good air permeability okay it should have adequate mineral composition and there should be necessary fuel for the second burning process which means that the fly ash has already come as a burnt product okay so burning it again is sometimes won't be much a uh, successful manner so fly ash should be have more fuel in it for the second time burning process okay it should burn again so that's why it's going it, it that why it's said said as it 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 must have a necessary fuel content for the second burning process okay and some of the other composition that's a must required for the uh, fly ash for pul pulverization and sintering and uh, preparing was that it must contain shale clay ferrous oxide and at least five percentage of unburnt coal okay so these are the chemical compositions that required for it and five percentage of unburnt coal so this coal act as a 
fuel okay so this coal will burn up and hence it the sintering process will takes place which results in the internal sintering takes place and which result on the more ground fly ash okay so that's why so this is the fuel that they mentioned here that means it should have more fuel for the second burning purpose i mean process okay so for sintering or which means that heating okay heating a component without getting a point of liquefaction that means that it should be heating at such a high that the the material should not con should not convert into a liquid form it should be in a solid form itself but it should heat it uh, but it could be heated to a maximum amount so that is called as sintering so there are two methods for sintering for pulverized fly ash that is shaft sintering and belt sintering okay burnt coal content uh, the coal unburnt coal is less than 5% any method of fuel uh, burning can be used but if it's very much more than the uh, what can we say and much more uh, more than the fly five percentage or very much higher than the five percentage that means that shaft and belt sintering can be done so it's almost like a clinker process only the what how it is done is that uh, the 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 fuel ash is mixed with the mine culm of 30 to 40 percentage coal content in it okay so which means that we, they will attain a proportion that they will achieve a proportion that has a best burning capacity all right so these are again passed these are passed through the very high temperatures of 1200 to 1250 degrees celsius all right so once they are passed they will be very much hot and they will be ground in the runner mill and will be sprayed with water okay so this ground moist uh, will be gr uh, will be in the granulated form and they are grounded again so this grounded form is known as the pellets okay that means this granulated form is known as the pellets so they have the size they will be will be round in shape the size will be 7 to 30 mm okay so once the pellets are formed they will, they will be stored and they will be crushed to required size just like in the composition of, just like the clinker formation in the cement manufacture okay by the way i've done a, a video on the cement manufacture also please check that in my profile and the bulk density varies okay the bulk density of fly, pulverized fly ash varies based on the origin combustion and the sintering temperature okay so some of the places where the pulverized fly ash is used in aggregate is in the structural lightweight concrete as i said that there will be high density which means that the strength will be more okay so structural lightweight concrete is is utilized with the help of fly ash okay so, so fly, they are also used as an aggregate for floor and roof uh, screenings precasting and also bulk fill so precasting industry has also a large benefit from the fly ash because uh, it will give a uh, all the, it will give a finished look for the concrete once it's over and also because of the tiny size the permeability i mean it will it will uh, reduce the permeability permeability of the concrete so that problem will be reduced to a large extent in a uh, precast industry so that will be a very good helpful for the designers in the precast industry so i hope you understand the importance of fly ash some of the basic facts about the fly ash thank you so much thank you once again please comment your suggestion please run your presentation please recommend and share the slides copy this in your browser this is my linkedin academy platform so until next time i wish you a great day ciao